Pacto de Fugua. Pacto de Fugua is a 2020 Chilean thriller film inspired by real events. The plot of the film focuses on the story of a prison escape that occurred on January 30, 1990. During the last years of the military regime, 49 prisoners from the Santiago Public Prison managed to escape by digging an 80-meter-long tunnel for almost two years using just a screwdriver. The movie starts with a prologue explaining that in July 1988, under the rule of General Augusto Pinochet, the public prison of Santiago housed over 2,000 inmates. Among 120 political prisoners, several members of the Chilean Revolutionary Organization await a sentence to death for carrying out an armed struggle against the military regime of Pinochet. It's day one, and the date is July 11, 1988. The prison officer brutally transfers the inmates to the public prison Santiago, Chile. The ad hoc prosecutor Andrade asks Colonel Joquera to separate the inmates and put them in different jails from north to south. After the transfer, Colonel Joquera declares in front of the prisoners that from now on, all the military prisoners under the state's anti-terrorist law will be grouped in blocks 7 and 8. Leon Vargas quickly enters his block and heads from room number 50, which he specifically wanted. However, the room is already occupied and he has no other choice but to take room 51. Rafael Jimenez with his two friends quickly occupy a room that they wanted and rush upstairs to meet their friend Vargas, who was supposed to take room number 50, but instead took room number 51. Jimenez anxiously questions Vargas, who seems rather relaxed that how they will communicate as they are on an angle now. Through their conversation, it becomes evident that Vargas has an engineer mind and that they have planned a conspiracy for their escape. Everyone is assigned their blocks where they unpack their belongings and settle down. Day three starts in the football court, where Vargas and Jimenez meet to discuss their plan of escape. Jimenez eagerly suggests that there aren't many safe places here, so they should get help from the outside. Vargas breaks his hope by telling him that he isn't sure whether the party is going to build the tunnel from the outside. He tells Jimenez to stay calm as eagerness can bring down any operation. Jimenez gets offended and starts reminding Vargas about his previous mistakes in Carrizal. In retaliation, Vargas mocks Jimenez, telling him that the attack on Pinochet failed because Jimenez's rocket launcher failed to work. They both kept reminding each other of their mistakes that landed them in jail. Both of them engaged in a heated argument and Vargas decides to quit the escape plan. However, Sanchez, who's also a political prisoner, makes them understand that they won't be able to escape the prison if they keep on fighting. Vargas tells them that they will need to hide 50 to 70 tons of debris that will be accumulated by digging the tunnel. Day 5 starts and Jimenez in his cell decides on a wall that should be dug as it's less noticeable and no one will think about checking it. They decide to create a false piece of wall to cover the hole every time they come in and out of the hole. At night, Jimenez and his cellmates start to pursue their plan. On the other side, Vargas and his cellmates start digging their cell's roof to get into the crawl space for hiding the debris. New inmates arrive in the jail after being brutally beaten. The ad hoc prosecutor Andrade and the warden receive defense attorney Fabriola Pizarro, who has now come to see the health conditions of the detainees, especially the most recent ones. Andrade refuses to let her enter the jail. Day 11 starts and Fabiola Pizarro finally gets to meet the new inmates through her constant efforts. She assures Oscar Lira, who is condemned for the death of two guards, that he will get justice. Meanwhile, Vargas makes a hole in the roof of his cell to make a path to the crawl space. Just then, they find out about a sudden inspection, so he and his friends decide to cover it temporarily with eggs and lime. Vargas and Patricio quickly clean the debris while Jimenez and Sanchez look for eggs and newspapers. The warden, along with some prison officers, start taking the survey of the cells. As they reach the first floor, Vargas quickly makes a fake wall and Jimenez covers it with a poster. The officers enter their cell, but fortuitously, they do not find anything suspicious. The conspirators take a sigh of relief and enter back into their cell. Day 34 starts, and the inmates are visited by their family members. Paulina Baez, ex-wife of Frondis Rafael Jimenez, comes to meet him. As he meets her, he inquires about the kids for whom he made toys in the workshop. She tells him that she doesn't want the kids to be a part of their argument, so she left them at home. Meanwhile, Dr. Patricio's father comes to meet him with a package of a first aid kit that he's been asking him to bring. His father feels ashamed of him as he never thought that he would have to bring a stethoscope to his doctor's son in a prison. On day 56, all the inmates are happy watching a movie in the theater room. All of a sudden, one of the inmates, Bigode, is arrested by the officers. He is beaten up brutally, leaving bruises all over his body. 
Turns out Andrade wants to make him his informant. Dr. Patricio eases his pain by giving him some tablets of aspirin. Meanwhile, Vargas and Sanchez create a concrete false wall for their cell. Just when they start digging the wall in Jimenez's cell for the tunnel, a prison officer arrives. They somehow manage to stall him and he doesn't find out anything about the digging situation. After the officer leaves, Vargas and Jimenez quickly collect all the debris in bags and place the fake concrete wall in the hollow space. Eventually, the inmates begin to visualize the length of the tunnel and how it will be made. After calculating that they will need to remove around 50 tons of debris to make the tunnel, they start the process of digging. They plan to hide the debris in the crawl spaces of Vargas' cell. All of them create a series of secret signals to warn each other whenever they see someone coming. Days start passing by, and the prisoners spend day and night digging the tunnel. On day 77, Vargas enters the tunnel only to find out that it still needs a lot of work. They realize that they are lacking manpower. The same day, Oscar Lira gets into a fight with the prison officers and is sent to hotel for a week, which is a small, locked cell with no traces of light. On day 83, it is yet again family visit day at the prison. Lira is surprised to see his brother there. Sanchez's pregnant wife seems worried about their child as she can't bear living in a separate world. Meanwhile, the conspirators get a feeling that their escape plan isn't feasible enough. While watching the news on TV, the prisoners are surprised to find out that the dictatorship of Pinochet is going to be over soon. However, they must escape before the end of Pinochet's era. It's day 86. The initial conspirators decide that since they are on a time crunch, they need more manpower to dig the tunnel. So they recruit more trustworthy prisoners to dig the tunnel that's more than 80 meters long. Vargas and Jimenez explain the plan to them and everyone agrees. Work for the tunnel starts at the very fast pace as they plan to dig and move 100 kilos of dirt per day and hide it in the crawl space. Since they're a larger group now, they decide to connect the cells internally to lower the risk of getting caught. They decide to maintain secrecy at all cost, never lose focus on the plan, and never repeat the past mistakes that ended them being locked up in there. They decide that division is the key to their success and that they must remain alert at all times. They decided to work only during the day as they need daylight for the work. The long working shift will be tiring, but they decided to show themselves as normal in front of others. They decided not to change their everyday schedule and not be late to any meetings or else they will be suspected. Lyra suspects that the group is working on an escape plan and tells Jimenez that he wants in. Finally, he's taken into the group, so they keep working without making anyone suspicious. Day 149 starts and the inmates find out through the radio that the attack that's been credited to the Manuel Rodriguez front has resulted in the death of one of the officers at Los Quines police station. Vargas suggests that they should evaluate the consequences of how this could affect them. Jimenez thinks that a situation like this can hinder their outside support without which their escape plan will be a flop. Vargas suggests Jimenez to ask Paulina to help him from the outside. On day 182, Paulina comes to visit Jimenez, who secretly tells her about the escape plan. He asks her to work with the other members of the FPMR and the Communist Party so that they can help the prisoners when the escape occurs. Paulina leaves the prison in a state of profound thinking on how she can help her ex-husband. On day 205, there is a sudden inspection at the prison. Vargas rushes to tell his group members to leave the tunnel. While the group members take time to get out of the tunnel, Jimenez stalls the prison officers by starting a riot with them, resulting in all inmates being summoned to the ground with their hands behind their heads. On the other hand, Jimenez is locked in the hotel and brutally wounded. Day 217 starts with Paulina convincing her political party to help the prisoners with their escape plan. They refuse to help her as the elections are approaching after 19 years, and in these circumstances, they can't support a prison break. Paulina returns home in a state of sorrow. While Jimenez is locked in the hotel, the other conspirators carry on with the plan and keep digging the tunnel at full pace. Later, Jimenez is escorted to the prison office where Andrade tells him that the court has ruled in favor of the death penalty against him. The defense attorney, Fabiola Pizarro, consoles Jimenez, telling him not to worry. Jimenez gives her a hint about their escape plan and asks for her help. Meanwhile, Paulina gathers the members of the front, asking for their help for the prison break. Without giving a second thought, everyone agrees to help their comrades in the escape operation. 
On day 392, Jimenez and his friend Xavier are in the tunnel digging when Xavier loses consciousness due to hypoxia. Jimenez manages to pull him out and Dr. Patricio treats him. Dr. Patricio informs his group members that there is a low oxygen concentration at the end of the tunnel and anyone can be suffocated there. On Vargas's suggestion, Jimenez manages to smuggle large polyethylene bags through his defense attorney, Fabiola's help. Then he arranges an electric motor that can blow air inside the tunnel. Day 413 starts and Andrade asks Colonel Joquera to isolate the inmates with the death penalty in different prisons as soon as possible since they don't have maximum security prisons in Chile. Meanwhile, Vargas lights up the tunnel by setting bulbs along the line. Paulina reads in the newspaper that nine inmates have been sentenced to death for attacking Pinochet, among which the names of Jimenez, Sanchez, and Patricio are highlighted. Meanwhile, Andrade threatens Bigote with his family's lives if he does not become his informant. On day 524, the conspirators finally reach the end of the tunnel, leaving there a red mark. A member of the front spots the red stain outside the prison and marks their point of escape. Vargas's father informs him that the red mark has been found, but it's still 40 feet short. His father asks him to pray as the Lord listens to all those who have faith. Turns out Vargas has lost all his beliefs after the death of his wife and daughter. Upon knowing that 120 prisoners are going to escape, Paulina tells Jimenez that 120 prisoners can escape and that he'll have to choose among them. On day 559, a high magnitude earthquake takes place while two inmates are inside the tunnel digging it further. Luckily, no one gets harmed. The conspirators decide that they should start the escape as soon as possible because the tunnel won't be able to survive another tremor. Finally, the day of escape comes. It's day 567, and the date is January 29, 1990. All the inmates are in the theater room watching a movie. While the prison officers are indulged in the movie, the conspirators start leaving the room one by one. In the cell, all the group members experience overwhelming emotions while hugging each other and start the escape by entering the tunnel in groups. Back in the theater room, Bigote notices that Jimenez is missing. Emilio tries to stall Bigote, but he finds out about the escape. Lyra stops Bigote from ratting them out and the two of them engage in a fight, with both of them getting wounded in the process. Meanwhile, help from the outside arrives and the prisoners start escaping. After escaping through the tunnel, the prisoners sit on a bus to be escorted to a safe house. Sanchez notices that Lyra is missing and decides to go back to get him. However, Lyra isn't able to make it through the tunnel as he's wounded. So Sanchez comes back without him and the bus leaves. Back at the prison, other inmates find out about the opportunity to escape and get into the tunnel. Some of them manage to escape, but the prison officers soon arrive and stop it. They are astonished to see an 80-foot long tunnel. Out of 120 political prisoners, 49 manage to escape. Andrade and Colonel Joquera are in a state of shock after knowing about the news. The movie ends with an epilogue explaining that on the 29th of January 1990, a total of 49 political prisoners escaped from the public prison of Santiago in what is known as Operation Exit. This has been the largest jailbreak in the history of Chile. This movie has a rating of 7 on IMDb. I hope you all liked it. If yes, then make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel for more movie recaps.